end with this thought. I've talked to you about the risks, the challenges, how this media culture is impacting upon us. I've also shown you some of the lights that in the middle of the hostility at times, we have to look for moments of breakthrough. Because even some of the most hostile people will have moments, God touches them. And I was praying with every one of those people, some of them, it was really an act of charity. I had very bad thoughts with some of them. What did you come to Rome for? To rake us over the coals once again. And I looked up a couple of times at the banner, I said, Brother Andre, open the doors of these people's hearts and minds. And the coverage was universal. It was really outstanding coverage. Take, you know, give or take a few crazy articles. But right across the country, it was wonderful coverage, because the story spoke for itself. Let me conclude with this idea. Not Brother Andre, I want to go to another saint who's probably having a good time with Brother Andre now. It's St. Paul of Tarsus. Paul of Tarsus was the great media mogul of the New Testament. Paul's ideas, his preaching, his writing, his theology, his teaching, were welded to his own passionate, passionate discipleship. Paul's theology was not borrowed or trendy or merely speculative. Paul of Tarsus, the great pastoral theologian, derived his vision from the living soul of the church and his own passionate commitment to it. He was the recipient and responsible guardian of a tradition. He said, I hand on what I first received. But he was also able, in dialogue with his churches, to draw a theological vision from the genuine Christian experience of his people. The church is the body of Christ in response to the factionalism of Corinth, a theology of weakness in the face of his own Christian's experience of physical and spiritual limitation, a theology of a law-free gospel of his confidence in the religious experience of Gentiles, the theology of a cosmic Christ, triumphant over the cosmos because of the paralyzing fear of fates so prevalent in the Greco-Roman world. For Paul, the dying and rising of Jesus Christ was the reality that explained all realities. It revealed the true face of God in light of the passion and of the Paschal mystery. Paul rethought and rediscovered the heart of his Jewish tradition. The God of Abraham was also the God of the nations. Paul just didn't say in synagogues or Christian communities. He went to Areopagus of his times, where the people were. He allowed himself to be challenged, he prayed, and he responded. He was unafraid. One of the most remarkable and important insights that I gained into St. Paul during the year dedicated to him is that he never operated, is, excuse me, that he operated in an extraordinary network of co-workers. He never tried to do this alone. He did not shrink from the demands of leadership or the responsibility of authority, but he exercised that calling in a manner compatible with his own theology of the passion and of the community that belonged to Christ. Paul apparently never traveled alone. He hands out the title co-worker liberally throughout all of his letters, and even his letters themselves are collaborative pieces. All but two of them are explicitly co-authored. More important still, his sense of collaboration is not simply a personal style or a tactic imposed by necessity, but it flows from the deepest experience of his faith and his theological convictions. This collaboration comes from his vision of the gospel, rooted ultimately in the image of God, who opens his arms to welcome all people. This was the God of Jews and the God of Gentiles. The building up of the community of the church was his restless apostolic goal, and he knew that every gift, no matter how brilliant and articulate, was always subordinate to the gift of charity and the bonding of the community. This must be at the heart of media, secular and religious. The memory of Paul is needed now more than ever before. Collaboration with others in our ministries, in our efforts in communicating the good news, in our efforts of telling the story of the church, is not a passing fad, nor can it be a theological dressing for expediency, for helping us to look good. It is an expression of the gospel. Paul knew that and lived it. I don't need to remind any of you that we too, who work in the church, especially in the area of communications, work alongside others who 
we must be motivated by deep mutual respect with a common sense of purpose. I think that's why, in small part, some of the story of Brother Andre was able to be told, not only to our country, but to the world. This must be our approach if the church is to be renewed and our mission to the world sustained. One of the most remarkable insights that I gained into Paul is that he operated within an extraordinary network of co-workers. He never shrank from the demands of leadership. He realized that if he was to be effective, that communicating the gospel was to be successful, he had to do it together. Let those ideas inspire us as we work in this new media world, as we are aware of the risks, as we put into practice what we learn, and as we try to establish better lines of communication with one another. Thank you.